welcome and greetings to all from the OmniX USA team. We are grateful you could join us today for the ninth webinar of the OmniX educational series designed to empower our customers when making tooling decisions. Today's topic, Bending Theory 2, will be presented by myself, Jack Downer. The presentation will take about 20 minutes, followed by a live question and answer conference call. We encourage you to submit your questions at any time during the presentation using the chat function on the screen. Today's agenda will cover physics of bending review, then wall versus standard wall tubes, aerospace cut versus standard cut wipers, grips, interlock and lip, followed by a question and answer session. As mentioned in the previous webinar, Bending Theory, bending can be described as a technological process using a set of tools that manipulates the shape of the tube. The pulling force or tension on the outer radius of the bend causes the wall of the tube to become thinner, while the pressing force or compression on the inner radius leads to becoming wrinkled. Between these layers is a neutral axis where forces remain equal to zero. A permanent bend occurs when the pulling force exceeds the yield strength of the material. The distribution of forces and position of the neutral layer depends on many factors. Some of these factors include the parameters and material of the tube, and the machine and its tooling setup. The distribution of forces has a significant impact on the part being bent. When bending a part with an open cavity like a tube, it is much more complicated than bending plate metal because there are many more possible defects which are initiated by the distribution of forces around the bend. Bending parameters. The OD or outer tube diameter, the wall thickness or gauge of the tube or pipe, CLR, which is center line radius, which is the radius, which is the line along the center of the tube being bent, DOB or degree of bend is the number of degrees the tube is being bent. In this example, it would be 45 degrees. DBB or distance between bends is the distance between the tangent of one bend to the tangent of another. Bending thin wall versus standard wall tubes. A useful analogy is the old game tug of war a sport that pits two teams against each other in a test of strength. Team one is the hollow tube material and team two are the hollow or the tool features on the bending machines. Grip is common. You, you need to have sufficient grip by the tools on the tube, much like you have to have sufficient grip on the rope to keep things from slipping. Setup is the positioning of the people, which is equivalent to the balls on the mandrel, the tip of the wiper, and the nose of the mandrel. The technique is what features of the tools you use. And pressure is how much you squeeze the rope or the balls, the machine, and leg force. Picture a tube made of tin foil versus rigid heavier wall tubing. The forming of both of these tubes is all about controlling the flow 
of the material realizing material flows to the path of least resistance. These paths seek to find space. It can be inside the tube if the mandrel is not sized properly, between the mandrel balls if they are too far apart, and outside the tube on the inside radius if the wiper is not properly positioned or not enough pressure dive force is being applied. While the tinfoil tube is much easier to shape, it will flatten and wrinkle much easier than a standard wall tube. Therefore, the pitch on the mandrels or the distance between the balls needs to be closer. The clearance on the mandrel from the outside finished diameter of the mandrel shank and the ID of the tube needs to be tighter and the wiper position is more critical. The distribution of forces by the tube outside the neutral layer depends on how well the vulnerable cavities of material flow are managed. There is more forgiveness in these areas for standard wall versus thin wall material. When to use a wiper? Wipers are used as support for the tube bending to mitigate defects such as wrinkling along the inside radius or out of round tube deformation. Introducing a wiper is commonly used when wrinkling starts to form along the inside radius of the tube. Basic tubing defects. Inner wall wrinkles. This is where the stability of the walls is lost on the inner radius of the tube. It is due to forces caused during bending. Reduction or elimination of the wrinkling can be achieved by properly setting up the appropriate mandrel and wiper die. As shown in this sim simulation, with no wiper, the space behind the tangent where the wiper is positioned is a vulnerable cavity. Wrinkles will form if the material is too thin, the radius you are bending is too tight, or there is not enough pressure dive force when then wrinkles will form. As shown in the past, there are charts and calculations that can also help determine when a wiper is needed. Once you determine you need a wiper, you will need to determine which style. There are two main styles, standard cut and the aerospace cut referred to as ASC. The standard cut allows the operator to adjust the wiper position during the setup due to the heel gap designed into the wiper. This style provides good support for most applications. The aerospace cut increases the support of the tip by moving the center point of the ISR cut. Full engagement results in a stiffer setup, allowing for more pressure dive force. And this style of wiper <clears throat> cannot be moved past tangent as you are mating right with the radius on the bend eye. And this also reduces the chance of the tip being ripped out. When to use one cut versus the other. Typically, larger radius and heavier wall bends use a standard cut wiper is not as much force as required to achieve a quality bend. So not so much support is required. Typically, tighter radius and thinner wall tube bends would use the ASC wiper as more pressure dive force is required to control the flow of the thinner material 
And so your wiper needs to be designed in position to provide the most support. The acceptable finish of your end product is also a factor. Aerospace, pharmaceutical, and cosmetic applica applications typically use ASC cut wipers. On the other hand, automotive, construction, and non-cosmetic applications usually will use standard cut wipers because they may be able to allow for more imperfections because of the application or the end product has a covering on it. And I'll talk about grips, function and design. The gripping section of the bend die and clamp die must overcome forces of the tubes resisting being bent along with the drag imposed by the mandrel and the wiper. For any given tube OD, CLR, or wall thickness combination, you need a certain amount of surface area and machine force to keep the tube from slipping during the bending process. While there are elaborate formulas for calculating the grip length, there are many factors that can offset what the minimum grip length needs to be. These include, but are not limited to, the surface type, machine rigidity, and pressure die assist, which is referred to as PDA, and collet boost. The grip section is often made separately and attached to the bend die. The grip length of the bend die is dependent on the parameters of the tube and usually has a special surface treatment. The surface of the clamp has a significant impact on the functionality of the tools. There are six basic surface types shown here. The smooth grip, the tube groove has no surface treatment. This grip is used primarily in applications where it is necessary to take care of the visual quality of the surface of the tube. This option is used, utilized commonly in the furniture fabrication industry. The limitation is that you have a 4D minimum recommended grip length. Grip blast. It's a gentle roughing of the surface and typically is equivalent to about a 600 grip sandpaper. The advantage of grit glass clamps are that they do not lower the quality of the outer surface of the tube after gripping. Grit blast is the common OmniX standard grip. Limitations are you have a 3D minimum recommended grip length. Surf alloy. This is a carbide based electric arc spray treatment. This achieves greater roughness and can be reapplied after wear. With the diameter of the tube groove machined at nominal diameter of the tube, the surf alloy has a positive effect of gripping surface and allows us to shorten the length of the clamp. The limitations are that you have a 2.75D minimum recommended grip length and it leaves medium markings on the vent tube. Flame spray. This is a groove is built up with a tungsten carbide by about five thousandths. This creates an extra pinch that results in more grip than the surf alloy treatment and can be reapplied after wear. This positively affects the gripping okay. surface and allows us to shorten the length okay. of the, the clamp further than the previous grip choices. Okay. The limitations are that you have a 2.5D minimum recommended grip length and it leaves medium markings on the bent tube. A serrated grip. This is a machined serrated surface of the groove. Serrations allow us to significantly reduce the clamp length. The coarseness of the serration is chosen for, for the diameter of the tube. The coarseness is set by the number of teeth per inch. 
we typically use 16 or 32 teeth per inch. The limitations are you have a 1.75D minimum recommended grip length. It leaves heavy markings on vent tubes and it must be replaced when worn. The neural grip. This is a coarse surface treatment, much like the handle of a uh, tool wrench that we commonly use um, for sockets. Um, the treatment allows for the clamp length to be significantly reduced. The coarseness depends on the diameter of the tube. Limitations are that you have a 1.75D minimum recommended grip length. It leaves heavy markings on the bent tube. It's only applicable for straight clamp applications and it must be replaced when worn. We'll now talk about reverse interlock. Reverse interlock gives the bend die a recessed channel for the clamp and the pressure die to lock with vertically. It improves tooling alignment, which helps many times on older machines, but also during the bending process, it will help eliminate marking caused by tooling due to misalignment. So in essence, if this clamp, if this feature wasn't here, the clamp could possibly ride up and down, putting marking on the top and the bottom of the tube. The limitations are that the interlock is not recommended if the material above and below the channel is less than a quarter inch. Captive lip. This is a feature that's added to bend dies for cosmetic applications. The lip extends past the tube center line to reduce the marking on the top and bottom of the tube. And the pressure die must be cut back by the same amount of material in order to not collide with the bend die. The limitations are you cannot use non-lip tooling with lip tooling. This concludes our presentation for today. We thank you very much for joining us. This will now be followed by a question and answer session. And any unanswered questions submitted during the presentation will be addressed during the Q&A session. To join the conference call, please dial 970-822-8670 and use the conference ID provided in the chat box. We thank you once again and look forward to joining us in the Q&A session.